Dinner for two. Anyone I know? Yes, intimately. Why, Dr. Weber, whatever can you be thinking of? You and me, alone. Oh, my grandmother warned me about men like you. Well, what did she say? Marry them. Are you happy you followed her advice? I have my odd moments of gratitude, yeah. Then what do you think? I think it's wonderful. You don't mind not going out tonight? Not anymore. Then shall we? Uh, you have to allow me to exercise an ancient female custom first. What's that? Living into something more comfortable. Well, I appreciate your seeing us, Mr. Monroe. Just call me Marty. All my customers do. Okay, you can call me Luke. That's what my customers call me. Constance, tell me. Please, Connie. Yeah. Lucky you called me. I was just about to close up the old insurance office and go home. Well, this shouldn't take too long. We have to get back to Port Charles ourselves. Something tells me you're not here to buy a policy. No, but we are shopping for information. Information? About what? Who? Your ex-wife, Natalie Dearborn. <laughs> Something up at home for us. Hmm? Sure, sounds good. 
Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll wait around till your shift is over. Okay? No, no, don't do that. Why don't you go home? No, I'll, I'll see you at home later, okay? Okay. I'll be waiting for you, beautiful. Mm -hmm. You're beautiful. said that I would never walk again. And uh, she stepped into my life, and I started walking. <laughs> yeah, so you're a friend of hers, then? Well, she tells me I'm her best friend. And she, she got me walking when the odds were against it. She did the same thing for me. You were hurt in Vietnam, is that correct? Yeah. It was a helicopter accident. Uh, I think I was lucky they didn't ship me home in a bag. Although I tell you, there were days when I wish they had. I know that feeling. And the doctors told me that I would never walk again. The world ends for you, doesn't it? Yeah, and then some. Well, they, uh, they shipped me stateside to a military hospital, and, uh, well, that's where I met Natalie. Was she working as a therapist then? Yeah, she just finished her training. I was down in the dumps, and, I mean, like, way down. She came into the room one day. <laughs> she could be a fireball, that one. She yeah. said she was going to make me walk. And you didn't believe her? No. Me either. Well, you see, uh, I had a real bad attitude. Who was this pipsqueak in my room telling me that she was going to get me on my feet? But she got to me. She made me believe in myself. Here's the result. I'm walking. <laughs> Yeah, man, she is quite a lady. So, to make a long story short, I fell in love and um, we got married. But it didn't work out? No. Why not? Mm, we had our differences. Such as? Just differences. She can be pretty independent, though. <laughs> Very. And she still is. She's secretive, too. Oh, Natalie had her secrets, all right. Like what? Uh, nothing you'd be interested in. I'd like to hear about them. One. Just curious. Too curious, if you ask me. Look, what's all this about, anyway? Well, it's really nothing that involves you, Marty. Listen, is Natalie in some sort of trouble? That's what we're trying to find out. I'm not going to answer any more questions. Not until you tell me who you really are and what this is all about. World Security Bureau. You're with the World Security Bureau? Answer our question, huh? What did Natalie do? I'm sorry, Mr. Monroe, but we're not at liberty to discuss any details. I think that we can tell you that it, it involves United States security. Security? We appreciate your cooperation. Oh, I guess I don't have much choice. Go ahead, shoot. I'll tell you whatever I can. What time is it, Brad? Seven o'clock. I must have been living too long by myself and become very, very boring. That's the third time you've asked me. I'm sorry, Natalie. No, of course you're enjoying your company. Well, I'm, I'm sure that Robert and Holly will be here any minute, so let's not worry about the time. Well, I wish I could be so sure. Yes, I hope nothing has happened. No, no, I doubt it. I, I'm just worried that maybe Robert got a last-minute call on police business. They have to cancel more engagements with us with that. Sounds like being a doctor. Exactly. Well, I just hope the delay is something non-professional this time. Yes, I wouldn't want this lovely evening ruined. Oh, here they are now. Good. Oh, I'm so sorry, <coughs> Linda. Oh, we were getting worried. Uh, it's got to get me this time. I spilled wine all over my dress. I just changed it for the last minute. Well, don't worry about it. You're here now. That's all that counts. I always, uh, you got it here for a while, huh? I couldn't decide which to change into. Yes? Yeah. I'll just get into a closet. I thought I was going to have to stand a dog squad to get her in. Could have been that New Year. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, Robert, wasn't it worth the wait? Definitely. Listen, if you two don't mind, I think our table is ready. Shall we? Uh, Natalie?
Stephanie. Would you like to join us? Oh, don't tempt me, no. I have a full evening's work ahead of me, Inspector. You have a lovely time. Well, and we're all here. Let it be evening and begin. told you that I, I did the whole thing myself. No. Ruby helped. Uh -huh. She did the whole thing. Uh -huh. That's why she said she couldn't come to the casino with me tonight. She even got rid of the kids for the evening. Oh, that woman gets a super hug the next time I see her. Okay. Would you mind practicing that super hug on me? Do I wouldn't suggest it unless I felt I was. Rick Weber, overdoer, overachiever, man of steel. I feel much better. I feel a lot stronger, Leslie. Oh, you look good. I'm very optimistic about my checkup, Leslie. Uh huh. I think you're making a splendid recovery. Thanks to you. No, I mean that. Thanks to you. I, I don't think I could have done it without you. Sure. Leslie, you have been with me. You have been behind me. You have supported me. Every step of the way. Of course I am. I love you. And I love you. More than I ever thought I could. Sorry I haven't been around much lately. I don't think it can be a regular fun to take care of a cantankerous old patient like myself. That is not it. That is not it. The only thing that bothers me is... Is that I know it hurts you to have to sit here and not be able to do anything, and it hurts me to watch you, and I should be able to control those feelings, and I have not been very good at that lately. I understand that. I hope you do. Because I very much want you to know that it, it's just that I love you so much that I want to keep every unpleasant thing even away from you, and I can't always do that. Yes, you can. You just have to stay with me. You sure makes you want to talk to you. You always hear about the, the closeness that, that develops when someone's sick. But they never tell you about the, the big barriers that uh, are erected at the same time. Mm -hmm. I know. And I will tell you that I'm going to have a whole hell of a lot of fun from now. feeling something like this is going to happen sooner or later. What do you mean? People like you showing up, asking questions. I warn Natalie. About what? Her crazy ideas. I mean, the woman could be great, but uh, basically she was a real fanatic. In what way? Uh, in every way. That's what finally ended our marriage. Could you be a little more specific? Natalie loves the cause. Oh, you should know that. Yeah, like uh, helping helpless, hopeless cases walk. Huh? Well, that's the positive side of it. <laughs> What's the negative? She started getting all kinds of weird political ideas. I mean, she got pretty un-American there for a while. It must have been pretty tough for a soldier just back from non stomach. How I couldn't stand it. Boy, the, the kicker came when she expected me to go along with it. And you didn't? No way. 
Well, pretty soon her ideas, they started infiltrating into our lives. You know, we, we disagreed about everything, so we split up. Did she, did she belong to a particular party? Um, if she did, she never did tell me what. She didn't mention any names? No. Natalie could keep a secret. <laughs> Listen, I, um, uh, you know, I don't want to get her in any trouble or anything. I mean, this is America. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? <laughs> I hope so. I got a few strong ones of my own. I was simply just trying to get some background information on it. Well, I'm afraid that's about all I can give you. Well, you've been very helpful. Yeah. I have to give her credit, though. For what? She sure sticks with something. I mean, uh, you guys, you wouldn't be here asking questions if she weren't still involved in all that radical stuff. Mr. Monroe, she may not be. I don't know. When Sally gets something in her head, there is no changing her mind. Well, thank you for talking with us, Marty. Well, anything for Uncle Sam. We have got a plane to catch. Boy, she sure blew it. Oh, what do you mean? Adley should have stuck with therapy instead of getting mixed up with politics. She would have been a lot better off. It's taken me hours to decide on that one. Don't believe she had anything to purchase that one. It doesn't mean that I had decided to wear it. I hate it when that happens. It's all set to wear one outfit and something's last minute happens and you're totally disgusted. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's what happens when you wear too many outfits. Well, that's Go to New York and not go to the theater. Well, I guess life is maybe exciting enough, you know. Yeah, 
Yes, well, you do kind of cause a scene everywhere you go, don't you? <laughs> you don't sweet you Okay, all right. How are things going here? Oh, they're not going so well. It's boring. Oh, I don't like to hear that. I know. Well, how's the dinner crowd? Oh, well, that's past the restaurant. It's crowded as ever. Oh, good. One little ray of sunshine and an otherwise bleak existence. What? Don't pay any attention to it. Oh, okay. Well, darling, I have to go warm up before the crowd gets busy, okay? Gregory here yet? Of course not. He never gets here until it's time to start. I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah, babe. Penny, for your thoughts? Afraid you'd lose your money. I haven't got one in my head. Are you concerned about what Monroe told us about Nana? Aren't you? She didn't tell us anything. Well, you think she could be okay? I didn't say that. You know, maybe she just lied about it all because she was embarrassed. Why? I don't know. It was a strange, volatile time. Vietnam and all that. People were into weird things. Maybe she just, uh, you know, doesn't want to own up to it. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. Right. The other way of looking at it is that she doesn't strike me as the kind of woman who would care what other people thought. Hey, maybe she didn't think it was any of your business. Oh, that's possible. Maybe it is none of my business. <laughs> True. Still. What? I don't know. I don't know. My head's saying give her the benefit of the doubt, and my gut is saying don't. Okay, look. Why don't I go over to Scorpio? I'll run the new information we got about it through the computer. And I'll double check it. Good idea. General Hospital will continue in a moment. 